Welcome in the name of Jesus the Savior, who died and was raised to new life by the grace of God. We are gathered here to worship, to remember before God our sister Marlene, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. We continue with our thanksgiving for baptism. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We will sing together our gathering hymn day by day, which you can find in your bulletin.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Marlene. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console all who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in hope and confidence until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a responsive reading taken from Psalm 139. And uh, we will read it responsively. You have the bold fonted verses. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. The gospel for today is from the gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place, or you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the way where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. At this time, um, I would like to invite Pear, Hans, and Tara up as they share um, some memories of Marlene. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all here today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm uh, Hans. I'm Grandma Jima's second oldest uh, grandchild and oldest grandson. Uh, so I'd like to share a couple thoughts here. We're all going to share, some, take some time to share. When I think about Grandma Jima, as we call her, um, you'll see up here on the flower, Jima. One thing that strikes me or always stood out to me about her is the expansive uh, changes in technology and life that she experienced as she was alive. And I think about a couple stories. One would be her very first job as a 15-year-old working in as a, a phone operator. She'd sleep there overnight during high school and connect the lines as people would try to call in and connect to other people in the city. You know, if she were here now today, I'd say something to her like, Grandma, look, you were so good at your job, the only way they could replace you is to invent like a wireless worldwide network run by <laughs> towers and satellites. Like, think of how incredible that is. Think of what you inspired. And she'd go, oh, stupid, you know? Um, and another thing with, like, when she first got married, you know, cooking for a lot of people, their stoves didn't have any temperature gauges. Wood fire, no temperature gauge, and just learning how to cook and make all the meals with that. And then think of the advances now, and she made so many family meals for us. And, you know, we, you're born and you grow up and you're like, 
you know, you just set this button on the stove and it gets to the exact right temperature, it cooks for the exact right time, and, and just knowing how that's how she learned. And as I cook more now, as I get older, think about that. A um, couple funny stories. So, Grandma, I guess the theme of this is like consistency and how much, even though everything was changing around her, she stayed really the same and consistent. And, you know, moving here to Minneapolis to help take care of Pear and myself, um, you know, she found her routines, her small town routines, I would say, her small town ideals. And so she moved into this high rise apartment building, you know, center of the, you know, Franklin area neighborhood. And, uh, but she still, you know, people from around here know there's Cub Foods and there's Target. So, She'd go shopping, not at Cub Foods, but at her Cub Foods. <laughs> and she'd go shopping at Target, not at Target, she'd go shopping at her Target, exactly. <laughs> and so one time as an adult, and I say this as an adult because we would go to Target with Grandma all the time. And one time as an adult, I accidentally ran into my grandma at Target. <laughs> Embarrassing, right? It's like one of those where I turn the corner, I see her, and I'm like, what should I do? You know, it's one of those, like, do I hug her? Do I say hi to her? And then I'm like, Hans, you say hi to your own grandmother. Yes. Like, even though it was an accident. Yeah, so I go, Grandma, Grandma. And, you know, she's in her zone. And she used the shopping cart as, the shopping cart helped her shop, let's put and walk around. And I said, Grandma, Grandma. And she goes, oh, hi. You know, one of those moments. Um, and we have a little bit of small talk, and then she goes, well, okay then, yep, bye-bye then. Yep, she had to <laughs> get on her way. She had a routine. Um, yeah, so I thought that was a funny story. And another one that things would happen to her, you know, so we talk about her target, her cub. She also, you know, worked as a merry maid and had a very consistent routine for 20-some odd years, 23, I think we're at, or she was at, yeah. And every morning when she would work at that Burger or uh, Mary Mead's, she would stop at not Burger King, her Burger King, <laughs> on the way to Mary Maid's. And one morning she was in there. Well, and this is how I heard about the story. She mentioned something. I don't really even remember how it came up exactly, but she mentioned something about, well, you know, my gift card at Burger King ran out, or I don't get free coffee there anymore. And I go, well, what do you mean, Grandma? She goes, well, the ceiling fell on me. I'm like, excuse me, what happened? One morning she was in there in the restroom the ceiling tiles fall on top of her as she's using the restroom. <laughs> you know, she's not harmed, no big deal, so she walks out and tells them, they're frantic, they're figuring out how do we not turn this into a much bigger deal than it needs to be. So they bribe her with a free month of coffee. <laughs> Best deal in the world, right? Of course, I'm gonna take that. Yeah, so, you know, about 12 free coffees later, she's done with her gift card there. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Those are my memories, um, and I just thought she was just a very consistent person despite everything changing around her. Something to remember. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara. I came from California the other day. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I was Marlene's youngest granddaughter, so I just want to say on behalf of my dad, and Marlene's son, Chris, my mother, Patricia, who's not here, my two older sisters, Christina and Danielle, my younger brother, Zachary, my husband, Grant, and myself, just how much we appreciate you all making the trip out here today to celebrate the life of someone so precious to us. To most people, she was Marlene, but to me and my siblings and my cousins, she was grandma or Jima for short. To know my grandma was to love her. Not only was she easy to love, but she knew how to give that love back to you without any hesitation. Growing up, my grandma and I lived about 1,500 miles apart from one another. But even through the distance, I never had to question just how much she loved me. Throughout every birthday I had or major holiday, I knew I could always count on her to send me a card in the mail with her handwritten notes attached inside, which were my personal favorite. In those notes, she would often take time, take the time to describe what the current weather conditions were like in Minneapolis, <laughs> or share what had happened over the past week just to fill me, fill me in. But with every card, she ended each note by saying, love you, Grandma S. 
Last year, I got the chance to visit my grandma in March, just before her 90th birthday, where we spent an entire weekend together. We even got to watch a movie together that I had never seen before called The Rewrite with Hugh Grant and Marissa Tomei. And I think Grandma had some choice words for Hugh Grant too, by the way, but I can't remember. <laughs> um, but, mm hmm very. But getting the chance to experience it with her made it that much sweeter. It was the first time in a long time I was able to have one-on-one -on -one time with her and a memory that I will forever cherish in my heart. During that visit, as I was leaving for the airport, my grandma hugged me and turned to me to say with tears in her eyes, you'll come back soon, won't you? If only I had known then that that was the last time I'd ever see her. So grandma, I'm so grateful to have had you in my life for almost 29 years. And I promise to never take the time we shared for granted. I promise to help keep my dad strong and stay by his side through it all. Never forgetting the importance of family, which you so effortlessly showed to all of your grandkids and great grandkids over the years. Thank you for being the most loving thoughtful, caring, spunky grandmother a girl like me could ever ask for. I will miss you more than I can even express. I love you more, Jima, and please say hi to Grandpa for me. Love always, Tara Catherine. I'm Pear, I'm Hansa's younger brother. Um, one of the G, the Gma's finest grandchildren. I would say the best. I would, you know, I'm a little biased, but uh, I think I'm, you know, I think I'm all right. The <clears throat> I loved Hansa's stories. Our grandma was a party girl. Okay, she was a big partier, and her the star of her party was you. Whoever was in the room, she was excited about celebrating you. And uh, just out of curiosity, has anyone gotten a letter or a card from my grandma in this room before? Raise your hand if you like. She was a big corresponder. She's excited about you people. Uh, and she would let us know all the time. It was almost hard to like show up to parties with her because you just knew you were going to get out loved. Like if you wanted to like, sh sh you know, if Tara's having a birthday party and I want to show Tara that I'm excited about her, I wouldn't win. My grandma's going to hold that, that title every single time. She was always in the moment. She was earnest and honest and fully present in the moment. She was not distracted by a thing. She was, she just loved being in the moment so much that she needed to take a photo every single time. And the only thing that she would get mad at me for is if I wasn't posing in those photos, get in here, get there. We, one more, I didn't get that combo with that specific eight people. Get in there. Okay, sorry, hold on, I'll put down the coffee. She was in the moment, she was all about moments when we moved her from the apartment uh, just in the last couple of years. Uh, we unearthed more photos than Google has. Uh, there's probably photos of most of you in this room. Um, you're welcome that we only put four photo boards up, is what I'm saying, because we had 400. Uh, the Target story is so fun because, yes, you know, it's this wild moment when you turn from being a kid who loves your grandma to like you're in that weird in between place between being an adult. You, you've all been there, you know, you kind of like, wait, my world is breaking apart around me. And for me, it was around Christmas. I didn't know Santa Claus uh, was real. And I was thinking about, you know, wow, I, I'm trying to finally like come to terms with this idea about who Santa Claus is. And it turns out the whole story about Santa Claus was true. Everything about Santa was true, except he wasn't an old dude with a beard. She was uh, my grandma, and she was a precious little thing who wanted me now 
to instead of getting served all the presents, come out to my car, I have a job for you. And so I go from one year just getting all these Christmas presents written with from Santa on it to I'm, whole, I'm hauling in, you know, <laughs> trash bags. There's 50 pound trash bags, multiple, two or three trash bags. My grandma was Santa Claus, bringing them in for all of us to celebrate. And then we'd look around and I'd feel so bad because, you know, there were like four of us in the room and she just wanted to celebrate so bad. Like if we had 12 grandchildren each, they wouldn't be enough. And the target thing too, I got, I had the privilege of uh, um, letting the world know a little bit about grandma. And so I got to share, uh, sometimes I'd like put her on my phone. I'd put her on Snapchat or Instagram and I'd get, people would love seeing the videos of her cause she's so fun to be around. She's so entertaining. And uh, one of my proudest moments is her getting recognized in public by strangers who've seen her on my story. And they're like, in Target, just like Hans, are you Pear's grandmother? <laughs> you know? And she wouldn't mention it. And then a couple of weeks later, you know, at dinner or whatever, like, Pear, who are these people coming up to me at Target? <laughs> like, I don't know. Fully in the moment, celebrating every time we're together. Um, uh, th that's where I would get emotional about just like remembering her today as she, this is the biggest party she'll regret missing because she loves all you people so much. Um, she'd, she'd love to be here today. And, um, so thank you all for being here. And on behalf of our whole family, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, there's not much more I don't know that I can say. <laughs> um, but I'll begin with uh, the obituary, which is printed in your bulletin. If you want to follow along, if you want to just listen along, that's fine too. Marlene Sandvig, age 90, of Bloomington, formerly of Clarkfield, Minnesota, and Minneapolis, passed away peacefully, surrounded by family at Our Lady of Peace Hospice in St. Paul, on Monday, May 1st, 2023, after a short battle with pancreatic cancer. Marlene Gertrude Jurgensen was born at home in Clarkfield, Minnesota to Martin and Annie Jurgensen on May 27th, 1932, the youngest of five children. She was baptized, confirmed, and married at Clarkfield Lutheran Church, where she has been a lifelong member. Marlene graduated from Clarkfield High School in 1950 and maintained a lifelong friendship with many of her childhood friends. She studied to become a medical lab technician in St. Paul, beginning work at Montevideo, Minnesota Hospital in 1951. In November, on November 21st, 1953, Marlene married Elmo Sandvig, and to this union, two children were born, Leslie Allen and Chris Elmo. Elmo preceded her in death on November 21st, 1977. Throughout her life, Marlene worked at both the Montevideo and Clarkfield hospitals, the Clarkfield Clinic for Dr. Haugi, the Clarkfield Care Center, Bethany St. Joseph Care Center in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and for 23, over 23 years, at her retirement job as a Mary Maid. In 1988, Marlene relocated from Clarkfield to Minneapolis to help raise her grandsons, Hans and Pear, who brought her great joy. Visits to Minnesota from her California grandchildren and her visits to their home were highlights in her life. To say Marlene was a proud grandma and great grandma understates the depth of her love. As a newlywed, Marlene was a farm wife and then spent the majority of her married life living in Clarkfield in her childhood home where she helped care for her aging parents. She was active in Clarkfield Lutheran Church, ALCW, served as a den mother for Chris's Cub Scout pack, and as one of the room mothers for Leslie's grad school classes, or grade school classes. <laughs> Sorry. 
Marley was a tireless fan of Chris's athletic teams and Leslie's musical activities. Marlene and her mother Annie cooked countless meals for the family and extended family who often visited from far and wide each summer. And they were seamstresses for any fashions not available from the Sears, J.C. Penney, or Montgomery Ward catalogs. <laughs> Marlene enjoyed two-week vacations at Lake Miltona every July for more than two decades. She loved accompanying Elmo when he drove school bus to football games, basketball games, wrestling matches, and parades. Visits to her brothers and families on the West Coast and to her sister Marion's family in Stillwater and to her sister Katie's family in Wisconsin and Illinois were her favorite vacation destinations. Marlene especially loved being Aunt Marley to her 14 nieces and nephews. Marlene is survived by her daughter, Leslie Nestigen, and her son, Chris Sandvig, and his wife, Patricia. Leslie's sons, Han Nestigen, and his wife, Rosie, and Pear Christian. Chris and Patricia's children, Christina with Dan Hinklin, Danielle with Sean Miller, Tara with Grant Russell, and Zachary Sandvig. She is also survived by great-grandchildren Ava, Liliana, Nicholas, Charlotte, and Grace Miller, and Rain Nestigen, and step-great-grandchildren Amy and Matthew Hinklin, as well as her sister Katie Engelstead, several cousins, nieces, nephews, and close friends. She is preceded in death by her husband Elmo, her parents, her father-in-law Elmer Sandvig, her sister Marion Carlson Hansen, her brothers, Robert Jorgens Jurgensen and Harris Jurgensen, her brothers-in-law, Russell Carlson, Donald Hansen, Eugene Engelstedt, her sisters-in-law, Evelyn Jurgensen and Dorothy Jurgensen, and her son-in-law, James Nestigen. The family wishes to thank Dr. Jenny Zhang of East Lake Illini Health, Illini Health, Dr. Paul Odenbach of Abbott Northwestern Hospital, and the remarkable staff at Our Lady of Peace Hospice for their competent and compassionate care. May God bless her memory to us. Well, friends and family of Marlene, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here to celebrate and honor uh, the memory and the life of a woman who had such a great impact in the world around her. I never did get a chance to know her, but uh, what I do know has come from stories, several of them shared today, and more, I'm sure, to be shared over lunch following the service. She was a diehard Norwegian, as some of you may know, and she uh, was surprised at the level of care and welcome that the Danes here at St. Peter's made for her. She was fiercely loyal to her hometown of Clarkfield. In fact, I hear she made a point to make sure that as many people knew it as possible, and that even though her grandkids never did grow up in Clarkfield, they had a wide variety of cardinal paraphernalia to honor her beloved hometown mascot. She was also a hard worker and committed caregiver. She found a lot of value in being a helper for her kids, for her grandkids, for the many, many people she cleaned for as a merry maid, even well into her 80s. She was independent. She was kind. She treasured her family and her friends and loved them with a deep, abiding love. You all know this. I'm probably not telling you anything that you haven't heard or experienced yourself firsthand. And if I imagine, or I imagine that if she was sitting here listening to me and the rest of us talk about her, she'd probably roll her eyes and pull a face. Because aside from all that she had done to make this world a better place by loving the people around her, by loving well, she knew and she still knows that she is deeply loved. In fact, by her work and her care and her compassion, it made faith come alive for other people. She was a reflection of the love that formed her, that claimed her in the waters of baptism, and have now welcomed her into a well-earned and everlasting rest. 
I love this choice of John 14 for this service today because she so very clearly took part in what Jesus was doing in the world. Jesus tells his followers that he goes to prepare a place for them. And later on, after this short section that I read, he says that those who follow him will participate, will be a part of what he is doing, and that he will never give up on them. She, for her part, never gave up on anyone. She prepared a lot of places. Homes getting ready for holiday meals, birthday parties, friends coming from out of town. And she trusted in the love that claimed her. And you know that she never gave up on her family and her strong conviction that love wins the day. Marlene knew that this love was not hers because of what she had done, though. Despite all of the beautiful and wonderful and impactful things that she did, she understood that this love that wins the day was given to her before she could ever earn it. And this love transforms and drives people. People like Marlene out into the world with a tenacity and a deep love for the world and the people in it. The love that God gave to her grew like a seed, rooted in an unconditional, perfect love and growing up to shelter the world around her and make it a better place. And so while we have to recognize that this time, this loss hurts deeply, it is also a sign of the deep ways that she loved each and every one of you and a sign of your love for her. Through God's grace, she was made part of the communion of saints, those people that God loves across time and space and language and culture, and those who are part of this community of forgiven and claimed people never stop being a part of us. When you pray, you pray with Marlene. If you gather around the altar for communion, you gather with Marlene. When you love people well, you do that with Marlene. And yes, when you drive 20 minutes out of the way to get a cup of coffee at your Burger King, (laughs) you do that with Marlene too. (laughs) Love that goes this deep, energy that runs this strong cannot be destroyed. And so I hope that you will find your own ways to cherish her memory and to let it be a guide and a model and an example for you. I hope that you'll support each other and the world around you as she supported you. And I hope that in the days and the months and the years to come, that you'll continue to tell the story of Marlene. We thank God for her for her life with us, and for our life together. We thank God for giving her to us to know and to love as we journey through this life. And we thank God that we have a chance to love someone so much. Amen. Amen. This time I'd invite Rosie up for some special music.
Jesus When I am alone Oh, when I am alone Oh, when I am alone Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world Give me Jesus. When I come to die, oh, when I come to die, oh, when I come to die, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. Give me Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure in certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Um, you can find that on the back cover of your, of your red hymnal if you'd like to read along. Gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us commend Marlene to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Marlene. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Um, Before we have our table prayer, um, just again want to thank you all for coming out today um, to honor and celebrate Marlene. Uh, We do have lunch uh, in the fellowship hall following this service. Um, You're all welcome to stay for as long or as short as as you'd like for that. Um, To get there, you take a left out of the sanctuary and a left down the first hallway, and you'll find it there. And in anticipation for this meal, um, I invite us into a time of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for food and for the hands that prepared it, harvested it, and serve it. We thank you for fellowship and friendship and remember those who feel lonely. We thank you for the health that we have and remember those who are sick. We thank you for our freedom and remember those oppressed and in chains. And we thank you for Marlene, that she would reflect your love to us in such a bright way. We pray all this in your name. Amen. At this, no? Okay. Sounds good. At this time, we will end with the hymn, Beautiful Savior, which is found in your red hymnal, number 383, toward the back of your red hymnal.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to